We're going to continue in, the, in our series this morning, Are You Missing Out? So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and uh, get those ready to go and uh, open up your Bibles, get your favorite Bible app out, and I'll tell you in a moment where we're going to go because we're going to go several different places. You know, we've been talking about this series over the past few weeks, Are You Missing Out? You know, in our world today, there's this fear of missing out. You know, I, I said this last week, there was actually a study a study of this, of this subject, that it defined it as an uneasy, sometimes all-consuming feeling that you are missing out on something. Even the minute things in life that we feel that if we miss out, then man, we're going to, it's going to, if, we, if we're not divided or we're not part of it or we don't see it, then we're really missing out on something in life. And we understand there's some things we want to miss, but we're talking about the things that are from God that we do not want to miss out in our lives. There's too many amazing things that God is doing that we don't want to miss out on. So we kicked off the series a few weeks ago talking, we, were look, we looked at freedom. You know, we discovered that freedom, the freedom we receive through having a relationship with Jesus Christ isn't just for us. It's not what we're freed from, but it's what we're freed for, which is to serve other people in love. Last week, we dove into joy, and we learned that there's a difference between happiness and joy. We talked about happiness as a reaction to something great, but joy is the product of someone great. See, and we, if, if we don't want to miss out on this joy that God has for us, that we've got to know the source of joy, we've got to know the truth of joy, and we've got to know that there is an abundance of joy that comes from God. Now, this week, we're going to look at what is considered the ordinances of the church, communion and water baptism. You say, well, Jacob, we're going to preach about communion and water baptism. Well, how else are we going to learn about it and do it right unless we go to the Word of God and learn it? Because this is what I'm going to tell you. I, I, I believe it's important not to miss out because that's what we're talking about. Not missing out on the good things of God. And we don't want to miss out on the true meaning and experience what communion and water baptism means to Christians. Because you may be in here and you may have been coming to church a long time or this whole church thing is new to you and you're trying to figure it out. Because I believe there's a lot of Christians that have taken communion, have even maybe been baptized, and you don't know the true meaning of what it really represents and why we do it. And then for you that this whole church thing, this whole Jesus, God thing is new to you, you're trying to figure out like, so what is communion? You don't even know what that definition of that word means or water baptism. What is that? I mean, no, so no matter where you're at, our goal here at First Assembly is to connect you to God. And this is a way that this happens. So uh, we want you to understand, see, because there's a lot of Christians who just do stuff and don't even know why we do the things we do. And here's the problem with that. If you don't understand it, you can't pass it on. And you also could be led astray. So when we understand the why, it can, it, it can take away some of the fears, the insecurities, and even answer some of the questions of like, why is communion always grape juice in a stale cracker? I've never tasted a fresh communion cracker and I've been doing this a long time. Or you think in water baptism, you think, well, is my hair going to get messed up? Man, is Pastor Jacob going to hold me underwater too long? I mean, you mean some of these insecurities that we may have. I mean, some of you have taken communion or you've been baptized, but you don't understand it. Or maybe you're in this room and maybe you were sprinkled with water as a baby. Either way, today we are going to gain some clear understanding of what communion and water baptism is and why we do it. Why we do it. So if you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here. So number one is communion. This is real simple. We're going to talk about communion. So what is communion? I mean, have you ever wondered why Christians eat a small piece of bread or a cracker and drink a sip of grape juice in church service? Well, you're not alone. I mean, there's so many people that think of this but never have the opportunity to ask the question. See, communion uses bread as a symbol of Jesus' body and the grape juice as a symbol of his blood. What happened on the cross, that his broken body, that he was, he was beat with, the, the, with was whipped and his body was broken. It was pierced for our transgressions. His blood was shed on him when the crown of thorns. And he did all of that for us. And that's what that, that cracker, that bread, that, that symbolizes and that juice symbolizes. See, Jesus 
He started the tradition of communion. He instructed his followers to use the bread and, and in scriptures the wine, we use grape juice, to remember the sacrifice he was going to make when he died for our sins on the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says this, For I have received from the Lord what, also, uh, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he, get, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. See, the intent is not for us to mindlessly perform a ritual, but to intentionally set aside time to remember what Jesus has done for us and why he did it. See, the early church... Man, they celebrated Jesus by taking communion. Sometimes they did it every day. I mean, they saw that it was a chance to recognize and th Jesus and thank God for all that he had done. I mean, and it's not about the bread and the grape juice. It's about the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. Now, catch this. It's not about the ritual. It's about remembering. It's not about the method. It's about the meaning. It's more to it than just saying, hey, here's a cracker, here's, here's a little grape juice, we're going to say a little prayer, we take it, we throw it away, and we go, oh, that was great. There's so much more to it, and what it is, it is us remembering what Jesus did for us. And also, it is also reminding us what we have to look forward to. Because of what he did on the cross in his broken body and the blood that he shed, we get to spend eternity in heaven with him. So it is kind of that twofold thing. We are remembering what he did, but we're also looking forward to what we gain out of that. We are remembering why he did what he did. So that's what communion is. So who's it for? Who's communion for? It is for Christians. Knowing, know that, that taking communion doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't save your soul. It doesn't get you to heaven. God, God actually warns us about taking communion without considering what it means and why we're doing it. So that communion is simply for Christ followers, people that believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. We take communion to remember his sacrifice and to remember that heaven is our home. That's why we do it. And scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, it says, Whoever, therefore, eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So what this scripture is saying is that we need to be in right standing with the Lord when we take communion. That's why it says we need to examine ourselves. What that means is when we're standing there and we've got that communion in our hand and the preacher says, hey, this is a great time to examine yourself. What this is saying, you're asking the Holy Spirit, hey, is there anything in my life not pleasing to you, Lord? Is there any sin, fault, or shortcoming that I need to ask for forgiveness for? Because, Lord, this moment is too holy for me to not take this seriously. He says, examine ourselves. So we see that it's for Christians. It's for Christ followers. So, so why should you do this? Well, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four 24 says this. Do the, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus instructs us, instructs us to take communion. Communion is not an obligation, but a celebration. Communion celebrates the gospel. See, Jesus was broken for us that we could be fixed by him. Celebrating communion marks the story of Jesus, how, how he gave himself completely to us to better our life, for us to have a new start, a, a fresh relationship. And as often as we remember Jesus, we should celebrate Jesus as well. See, this communion, it reminds us of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And it reminds us what we have to look forward to. See, communion can and it will refresh us, renew us, and allow us to recommit to Christ. It's like a shot in the arm, man. It's a, it's a holy moment when we take communion. 
to saying, God, I'm rededicated. I am here with you, God. Each and every time we take it, it's a renewing of that moment. So how's it done? Well, here, after COVID, God bless COVID, we go to these awesome little, these things here. Uh, and, and so these are kind of like a love-hate relationship because used to, it would be like a little cracker and a thing and juice in a cup and it would pass around and every, everybody would touch the crackers in there trying to just get one. Come on, don't act like you not thought of that because we've all thought like, yeah, everybody's hands in there. We're just, honest. anyway, so we've changed. I'm sorry, man, it's just the way I think sometimes. Uh, so how it's done is bread. And so with this, and I'm telling you this because you say, well, Jacob, this is like really elementary. Well, I'm just going to tell you, not everybody knows what you know. And we've got to make sure everybody knows what's happening because it's important. This is important. This is one of those things we don't want to miss out on. And I want to simply say, just because there's like three layers of cellophane on this, when we take communion, I don't want your focus to be on this. I want your focus to be on examining yourself and thanking God for what he's done in your life. Amen. Amen. So bear with me here. So simply, this little cellophane, there's a top piece. You're going to peel that off. And then there's a little wafer right there. It's that simple. It's that simple. And then in a few moments after that, you're going to peel back the other cellophane. And then you're able to get to the juice. It's that simple. I know you're thinking, Jacob, I, we're not, I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying the first time I saw one of these, it took me five minutes to get into it. You laugh, but I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> that, that was a long time ago. I've, I've matured since then. But it represents that cracker is the bread. That little cup is the juice. We are representing the broken body of Jesus and the blood that he shed. So when taking communion, we are prayerfully asking the Holy Spirit to share, share with us the significance and the importance of what that moment holds. So many times when we can rush through communion or we're, because typically a lot of times it's at the end of a service and it's like, well, man, my stomach's growling. I'm hungry. I could eat like five of those right now. I mean, we start thinking of those of what we're going and we miss the moment. We don't want to miss those moments. We don't want to miss them. They're too valuable, too important. Man, they're, they're, they're something that it just does for our, our faith in Christ. And so... You're, you're, taking, you're taking it prayerfully. You're doing it in an honoring manner. And you're allowing the Holy Spirit to examine you. It's an act of worship. And so it is simply like this. We're going to take communion at the end of this service. And what we're going to do, and, and when we do this, not yet, because i got to talk about water baptism really fast in just a moment. But, but this communion, our usher is going to come. They're gonna, there's going to be trays, and there's going to be these in a tray. Each one of you, you're going to take one of those. And, and when you do that, you're like, well, what about my kids? My kids are with me. That's up to you. That's between you. If you man, if, if you think they, and they're following Jesus and they've got a relationship with him, man, jump on it. It's a great opportunity for them to watch you worship God and honor God. Come on. That's how they learn. That's how they learn, by watching you. And so, that will come by. You're going to hold that. And then once you hold that for a minute, I will give you instructions of when to take it. I'm going to read a passage of scripture. And I'll say, hey, take the bread. Then I'll say, hey, take the cup of, of juice. You'll drink that. And, man, then we're going to worship God. The praise and worship team is, man, they're going to be singing. And it's going to be a time of worship when we do this. It's going to be a time. So, I just want you to be prepared. We're going to do this at the end. We're going to practice what we preach. Okay? That's where we're at. All right. Communion. Everybody good? Hopefully you learned something. All right, number two is water baptism. What is water baptism? Is it just filling up a tank and dunking some people in it and we go, whoa, that's it? No, it's so much more. First of all, it's an act of obedience. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus is conveying the importance of the act of our belief. This is about taking something you know and turning it into something that you do. Water baptism is an inward work manifested in an outward action. In other words, if Jesus is really the Lord of your life, if he really radically changed your life and you truly believe that, then you've got to act on it. And water baptism is an act of obedience. Not only that, it's an act of identification. 
Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm, on, I'm not worthy to carry. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. See, this is John talking. John the Baptist. He was a traveling preacher. And he was known as a forerunner of Jesus. And his teachings are very clear. John was about three things. And man, you see it in scripture. I bet if you hung out with him, he would say these three things over and over and over and over again. Man, he, was, he knew his vision and his purpose. And it was this. It was about repenting. Turn from your sin. You read things about John the Baptist. That's what he preached. Return, or turn away from your sin. Repent. Number two, it was turn to God. You need God is what he said. And the third thing it was get baptized. That's what John, that's his, and I just preached John the Baptist sermon right there. That is it. Repent, turn to God, get baptized. Now in the original language, the Greek, the word baptism, it was a cultural word before it was a spiritual word. See, it meant to submerge, to wash, to make clean with water. And people of that day, they were used to hearing this word of, of baptism. And the, the actually Greek word was baptismo. Is how it was. I'm probably butchering a little bit in my Arkansas accent that I bring here. Uh, there, But it was, they were used to hearing it because it had to do with bathing or washing clothes. So visualize this. John is preaching his baptism message. And as he's preaching, people are in the river thinking they're already doing what he was saying because they're talking about, we are washing our clothes. We are even cleansing ourselves. But John's baptism meant something totally different because there's a difference between washing something and being washed from something. Come on. See, when John the Baptist, when, when John baptized people, they were being identified with Christ. It wasn't just, oh, they're standing in the river and they're washing some clothes and that's their baptism. They were saying, I am, I'm a Christ follower. I'm a Christian. I believe in this message John is telling us. It was more than just culture at that point. It was a different mindset of not caring that, not caring that the whole town was there. It was a decision that they wanted to be identified with Christ. See, water baptism is a way to tell everyone you're a Christian. I mean, could, think about this. Could you imagine being married and not telling anybody? Wouldn't, be go, wouldn't go very well. I mean, because think about this. When you, when you started dating, like, like when I started dating Audrey, I told everybody. I was excited. Man, I had, a, I had a smart, beautiful girl, man, that I, it took me time to wear her down before she started dating me, but it worked out, and uh, I'm persistent. And, and so I was telling everybody, but imagine when we got married that I didn't, it wasn't talked about. It. That's just odd, because you should be excited about those things. See, it, it should be the same way when God takes our sin and removes it from his memory and sets us free. We should want everyone to know what God has done in our life. See, because this is too good to keep to ourselves. And water baptism is the way we do that. It is a public display of what God is doing on the inside of us. See, Jesus himself was baptized. Matthew 3, 15 says, but Jesus said, it should be done. We must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. See, Jesus is not asking us to do something that he didn't do. I mean, this will be a defining moment in your life, a life-changing moment, a defining moment that you'll always be able to look back to, a moment in which you, you turned your belief into obedience, where you identified with Christ. And it's, it's not just a moment, but it's a defining moment. See, because when we, when, when we go down under that water, we are identifying with his death. Romans 6 and 4 says this, For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also live new lives. See, we experience his resurrection power. Our old sins are gone and now we have the power to, to live a new life. Galatians 3, 27 says, For all of you who were baptized in Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. 
We are identifying with Him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new, new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. See, when we get baptized, we are saying we are identifying with who, who, what Christ has did in our lives. So important. So who's this for? Every person who has made the decision to believe in Jesus Christ. See, because the only one requirement to be baptized is your belief in Christ. Acts 2.41 says this, those who accepted his message were baptized. See, baptism does not make you a believer. It shows that you already are one. Baptism does not save you. Only your faith in Christ does that. Ephesians 2 and 8 says this, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So that tells us that water baptism doesn't save us. It's us being obedient to Christ. Some of you may ask, well, what about kids? What, how does that work? We believe here at First Assembly that we, we baptize children as long as they are old enough to understand what it means to make a personal declaration of their belief. That could be at a lot of different ages. That could be, there's five-year-olds that, man, they, they got saved and they know who Jesus Christ and what he did in their life. There's some kids it may take to seven or eight, nine or ten. But whatever that age, that is you as a parent, as the spiritual leader of your home. You are talking with your kids and making sure that they understand that baptism is not just, hey, you get to go swimming. That there's a spiritual act to this. And that this means that they are saved. That's it. It's that simple. It's not hard. It's having a conversation. And that's a decision between a parent and a child to be able to do that. So, why should I do it? Baptism declares that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. It is a public confession of your faith in, and it is also a commitment to Jesus Christ. It is the next step after salvation. It is an important foundation of your Christian life. Again, Jesus himself was baptized. That's why we should do it. Mark 1, 9, or 1 chapter 1. Verse 9 says, one day Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and John baptized him in the Jordan River. So, how's it done? How is this done? Well, it's simple. We follow the example that Jesus gave. It's by immersing someone in water. Again, the Greek word meaning to baptize means this, to dip under water. It's immersion. It, it is all the way under. It's all, I don't know how, it's all the way under. See, baptism in the Bible, was it, it shows that it was emerging in underwater. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 says, After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water. The book of Acts shows us this. It was very normal with, with in, in, uh, for, for believers at that point. Acts chapter 8, verse 38 says this. In order, he ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down to the water, and Philip baptized them. And when they came up out of the water... It is, Scripture shows us over and over and over, this is the way it's done. Now, I'm just going to state, because I don't know uh, what background you come from, and I can say this very safely right here. And, and I will just tell you, there's some people that get hung up on the, the semantics of this, of what is said, what is done. I'm just going to tell you, it doesn't matter if we go up there and don't say one word to each other and you get baptized. It is, it is a public display of the affection. So... I know some people, it's got to be in Jesus' name. There's other people say, no, it's got to be in the, the, the baptized name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I mean, it, we'll say all four if you want to. It doesn't matter because that's not the point. Are you following me? It's not the point. And people get hung up on that and think, well, that's not the right way. That doesn't mean anything. No. Are you following me? The reason we do it, because I think about this, then I'm going to move on. When John baptized Jesus, when he baptized him, do you think he said, hey, I'll baptize you in your name? Do I baptize? I mean, we, we don't know. I mean, think about that. So the, some, the, the, the terminology we use, man, if you, if you come to me and I'm going to baptize you, he's like, hey, Pastor Jack, I'd like to be baptized in Jesus' name. Okay, I got no problem with that. Hey, I, I want to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I, I will do all of that. Because it is, the mo it is what you are doing. It is the act of obedience, yeah. not the words. Are you, if, you, if you follow me, say amen. amen. I know that's a little touchy, but man, it's just better to talk about it and let's get it out. So, it is simple. I'm just going to tell you how it's done. 
Man, you will come. And when you get in, you'll step in the tank, and the only thing that's going to be said to you is simply this. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? You're not going to have to share testimony. You're not going to have to do anything like that because, I mean, I, I get some people that freaks you out. I'm not doing that. But I'm going to ask you, to, when you're there, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you said yes, then I'm going to say, all right, grab a hold, grab your nose. And I'm going to say, I baptize your name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I'm putting you all the way under, and I'm going to pull you all the way back up. Now, you're thinking, how long do you hold me under? Depends how much your family gives me. And I'm just teasing. That was, so tough to <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. Just making sure you're awake. Making sure you're awake. It's just going under and coming up. And we're going to celebrate. Because I just want, I'm going to stack the deck here. This is what it is. We are gonna, we're going to be playing. Our band's going to be playing praise and worship. Man, they're going to be on point. It's going to be fun. It's going to be loud. And when people get baptized, we're going to cheer. And we're going to holler. And, man, when we see them, we're going to high-five them. Man, we're going to hug them even if they're wet. Man, we're going to take pictures with them. Because it's a celebration of what God is doing in their life. And we want people to know, man, you are, when you come to First Assembly, you are part of the family of God. And we're not in this thing alone. Man, we're meant to do life together. And that is part of it. We celebrate. So next week, man, you come ready. Man, gargle salt water before you come in so your voice is strong. Because we got to cheer for minimum of 12 people. Minimum. And I'm believing maybe some of you in this room today. You're like, man, I understand what that is. You say, well, Pastor, I mean, I was baptized when I was a kid. Man, I, I'm not against you being baptized again. Because of this, maybe life is just throwing you a curveball, or maybe you don't remember it. It was just something your parents made you do, or or it was like, oh, everybody else is doing it, so I'm doing it. Or, you know what? Maybe you at, you were ten years old and you got baptized, and now, man, your faith is growing, and you're like, man, man, I know what this means, and I want people to know. And this is a thing for you and God, man. You get baptized, you do. If that's what you feel God calling you to do, man, we'll baptize you. That 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 is, there's no problem with that. So. I'm going to close with this. Our team's going to come. Simply put, water baptism is a public decoration of your faith. It's identifying with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and it's a new life. It's Jesus is our model. So if you've, ded if you've dedicated or rededicated your life to Christ, and maybe you haven't been baptized, or you were baptized a long time ago, and you want to do that, I encourage you to take that next step. Man, I encourage you. At the end of this service, go back to that table, put your name and your phone number, and man, let's celebrate together what God is doing in you. Man, let's, let's celebrate that. And so that's going to be next Sunday. And I encourage you, if you are being baptized, man, you need to invite anybody and everybody you know. Because it's a celebration. Because I'm just going to tell you, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let you in. I'm preaching about hope next week. And I'm going to be preaching about the blessed hope, which is heaven. We have something to look forward to. I'm believing you're getting baptized. You have friends and family here. I believe people are going to get saved. Believe in it. You're like, Jacob, so you're using baptism to get people to church? You, yeah. <laughs> you bet. We get, people, we get people in this building. They can hear the gospel. Man, that's what we're about. So I encourage you to do that. So what would you be missing out on? Man, that's, that's our whole thing we've been talking about. If you didn't participate in these two ordinances of the church. Communion would you be missing out? You'd be missing out connecting to God. Communion is important because it's a command to remember. Water baptism, you're going to miss out being obedient to Christ. You're going to miss out on sharing your faith and identifying with who Christ is in your life. So these are two important things we don't want to miss out on. Come on, would you stand with me across this place? message from Pastor Jacob. We pray that the Lord spoke to you through it. Now we would love for you to connect with us through Facebook and Instagram at Cobble First Assembly. And if you'd like to give, we have three ways to do that. In person, online, or through text to give. Those will be linked in the description box below. Thank you for joining CFA Online this week, and we hope to see you again next time.